Daryl, you've made a number of visits to London, I believe, in recent years to speak to the Privy Council about your concerns about the political situation in Australia. Can you give us a bit of a background or rundown on exactly what led you to make that move across to London? I, I believe, from what I've heard, you were actually there for quite some time. These were quite involved matters you were discussing about how Australia pertains to the Privy Council. Well, thank you for the question, Robert. The uh, what brought us to London was um, the uh, behaviour of the Australian Parliament um, towards um, Senator Rodney Culleton from Western Australia. The way they treated him in that Parliament uh, was well and truly outside of the laws prescribed here. Um, a sitting parliamentarian has um, privileges and if there is any, any claims made against him with respect to his standing in that parliament, then there is a proper process that must be followed according to the constitution. Uh, there were parties, especially the Attorney General, George Brandis, and the President of the Senate, Stephen Parry, who were um, deliberately undermining any process that we tried to get going in that parliament with respect to um, especially the standing of the High Court uh, as it stands here in Australia and um, we were acknowledged for that and I encourage our listeners to look at um, Rodney Cullerton's maiden question and his maiden speech. These, the, those two incidences in the Senate of the Australian Parliament um, essentially put the High Court on notice and brought about the Royal Commission into the banking uh, industry here in Australia. Uh, they threw us out of Parliament, um, abusing um, privileges, abusing the will of the Parliament. Um, we managed on the 1st of December 2016 to get a motion on the floor of the Senate up with the backing of the Australian Labor Party. We had a vote of, I think, 36 to 24, um, stating that the referral of Senator Culleton to the Court of Disputed Returns was to be put on hold until the House saw all of the evidence that um, the Attorney General was relying upon. Uh, that was abused. We got that motion passed. It was motion 163. Uh, a few days later, on the 7th of December, uh, the High Court, sitting as the Court of Disputed Returns, um, uh, really pulled a rabbit out of the hat and uh, ignored the will of the Parliament and went ahead with the trial against Senator Culleton. That led us, of course, over... Uh, we, we fought that tooth and nail for uh, pretty much right through 2017, 2018, and it led us to the, um, after going back to the High Court and utilising many legal angles, we saw that the system here was just not budging. So myself and um, one of the other office staff for Senator Culleton, Peter Gargan, and I went to London and we filed what was called a habeas corpus in London in the High Court of, on the Strand. So that's, it's not the highest court in London, uh, in the English court system. The highest court is the Supreme Court, and that's where the Privy Council lay. So we couldn't get direct access to the Privy Council, but we needed to get to that Privy Council through appeal. So if our um, application for habeas corpus failed in the High Court, then we were going to use that avenue of appeal to get in front of the Privy Council. Um, that more or less did work to a certain degree, um, but it did cause us, we spent two months in London um, doing that uh, paperwork and bringing awareness uh, from the Westminster system to the plight of Senator Rodney Culleton here in Australia. Um, we then worked towards uh, later in 2019 we went back to London and we filed a case against the Governor of Western Australia, uh, 
the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Western Australia and the Attorney General. And we filed a case of judicial review in the High Court on the Strand, having established that yes, we can um, file a case uh, in London, uh, being from Australia, uh, because the basis of that application was around the Commonwealth of Australia Constitution Act 1900, which is an act of the UK Parliament. So <clears throat> we are all British subjects in Australia and that's what the Constitution grants us the right and all of the inherited rights that come with that. Uh, we filed that case against the government of Western Australia and they, the court went over that paperwork in great detail, of course. Uh, they are very, um, they are devils for the detail, of course. Uh, they, are, they inherited uh, many hundreds of years of common law and of course this, the courts in London uh, are not something that's an easy pushover. They acknowledged our paperwork as they did when I was there first. They, they accepted our filing. They did it again with the case against the government of Western Australia and they just put an instruction out to the state solicitor for Western Australia who was representing the government there to file a defence. Um, so they gave them a time span to file that defence and that deadline was due on the 19th of March 2020 which was the day that COVID-19 came down and shut the system down. So <clears throat> we then went about, uh, and of course the whole world was in shutdown, so um, we were in fairly constant contact with the court because the administration side of the court was still open. Uh, and recently, uh, in September 2020, the court reopened in London and the case manager then because our case was pretty much first cab off the rank, the case manager, uh, their job was to have a look at all of the paperwork that had been filed and as to whether or not it was to go in front of a judge. Uh, that was granted and the job was handed up to a judge in November 2020. Uh, the uh, reminder that the government of Western Australia has failed to file a defence. They attempted to um, influence the court. There were a number of letters that they sent to the court asking them to please strike out the matter, that it was a, a waste of time and effort, that the, England doesn't have jurisdiction um, and of course the court um, knew better they would not have filed this case if there if there was no jurisdiction there is and they have filed the case so the the matter is still in front of that judge and it's a very hot potato we're essentially challenging um, the standing of the governor in Western Australia the Constitution of Western Australia uh, grants that the governor must be appointed by Her Majesty the Queen of the United Kingdom and no other. Uh, and as such, the appointment of the Chief Justice and the Attorney General fall by the wayside because if that governor does not have the authority, uh, then, or if that governor has not been appointed by the Queen, um, then it's, he's pretending, he's an acting governor. And this is pretty much the case throughout Australia. So we, we topple the West Australian government, then the rest fall by the wayside. This is what we're encouraging the Northern tribes, the indigenous tribes of Australia to intervene. They did, they managed to successfully intervene into that case supporting our application in the court. The court accepted their intervention, as well as the Torres Strait Islanders. Only a matter of a month ago, they managed to successfully intervene in that case in London. And of course, I urge you know, um, 
all of the listeners to uh, in, intervene, uh, inquire. The matter is CO588 in the High Court of London on the Strand. Uh, and it will be our, um, our way of bringing back the Commonwealth of Australia um, here to all the people of Australia. It's in all our benefits.